is Alessandra. Welcome to my home. Welcome to my kitchen. I am super excited today. My daughter is crawling behind me. Okay. And the dogs. <laughs> Just go away. Go away. Okay, my daughter is gone. The dogs are out of the way. Let's try this again. Okay. Let's start with five pounds of Idaho russet potatoes. I'm using russet because it's a nice and dry uh, we call them old potatoes. When you see the dryness on the outside of the skin, that means that they're not freshly picked and don't contain a lot of water. So first thing we're going to do, fill up a big pot of water, wash the potatoes and get that on the stove to boil and cook the potatoes with the skins on. Okay, now what goes in the croquettes, the first thing, one, once we drain the potatoes and uh, mash them with the scacciapatate, we're going to be adding some butter, I use a half of a stick of butter, which is two ounces. Can you use a little more, a little less? Yes. And I have five eggs here. I will only be, I will be using the yolks inside the potatoes and then the whites as the whitewash when I need to uh, roll it in the bread. Okay, I have a pound of mozzarella, but I don't think we're gonna be using it all. If it's a fresh mozzarella you buy, leave it in the fridge overnight. You want it to dry up a little bit. I also add a little bit of fresh parsley because when my mother had the deli, that's what she did and that's what I grew up with and that's what I love. The, the parsley is really optional. What also goes really well in the potato croquettes is if you like some ham in it. If you want to um, chop up some ham or roll it around the mozzarella and put it in the middle, that works. Uh, it's absolutely delicious too. Okay, once we get the mixture ready, then we're going to roll it in flour. I have, a, I would say, a cup and a half, two cups of flour. This is not really a recipe that you need to measure everything, okay? Then after that, I'm going to do, of course, the, uh, the whites, the egg wash, and then the breadcrumbs. I like a very fine breadcrumb that's not seasoned. Do you want to season your egg, uh, your, egg, uh, your uh, breadcrumbs? Go ahead, I like it plain. And it really, because once you have that flavored breadcrumbs, it takes away from the taste of what's inside, which is the potato and the mozzarella, and don't forget the salt and pepper. I do add a, par um, I'm sorry, pecorino romano with a little bit of parmigiano. I'm gonna say I have about three quarters of a cup here. Can you put a little more, a little less? Just make sure before you add your eggs, you taste it. So like that, you'll know how much salt to add. Okay, let's move over to the stove and let's get the potatoes, and let's get the potatoes boiling. The potatoes have come to a boil. I am going to time it, okay? Also, uh, I, the way you see if the potato's done, just insert a knife, and if it goes through, that means your potatoes are cooked. But this is what you want. You want a rolling boil, put the lid on it, and continue cooking. All right. Yeah, the potatoes look good. Okay, some have opened. I'm just gonna, yep, they're very soft, they're wonderful. Let's drain them, and then meet me on the counter. I'll show you how to smash them. Okay, so you need one of these things. These are, this is a ricer. Amazon, Bed Bath & Beyond has it. I think I brought this back for many years and years ago. Okay, no other way to do this, but with the potatoes being hot, otherwise the peel doesn't come off. I use a plate underneath it. It makes it for easy cleanup. So this is what you do. If the potatoes are a little too hot, just grab your uh, hand towel uh, to hold the potatoes on. Again, if you wait for the potatoes to cool, the skin is not gonna come off. Take the potato, right in and and you mash it on to the next one it's very quick oh a potato a potato okay cooking touching hot things i lose um sensitive sensitivity on the tips of my finger but it's all good because i could grab pots right out of the oven and I burn myself. Okay, this is what they look like. They are very hot. So the first thing I'm going to add is the two ounces of butter and let it melt. This is what I mean by easy cleanup. You just now empty the plate and you didn't make a mess everywhere. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just let the butter. Okay, so yeah, the butter is melting. And now the next thing is going to be the salt. 
I'm going to sprinkle about, I'm going to say about a good teaspoon. Now, don't forget, the, the cheese also is a bit salty, so you don't want to overpower it and make it very salty. A good crack of fresh black pepper. Again, maybe you want a little less, a little more. That's really up to your taste. And just let it, let the butter melt. We're not going to add the eggs yet because it's, they're going to cook in there. So you gotta wait for it to cool down. Just bunched up the fresh parsley and I'm gonna slip it. The smaller you could get it, the better it is. Because the croquettes are kind of small, so you don't want these big pieces of parsley in it, okay? Also, the parsley is all optional. Uh, this is what I grew up with, and I love it. Another great addition to the um, uh, croquette di patate is if you want, you could chop up some ham and just put it in the mixture. It also is a very nice addition. Let's add the... Uh, Pecorino Romano with a little bit of the Parmigiano. I'm going to say this is about three quarters of a cup. Do you really need to measure and be precise with it? Not really. You could have a little more, a little less. It's fine. Just get it all well mixed. Now is the time to taste it before you add your raw eggs, okay? And that's exactly what I'm going to do. It's good. It's very good. So enough. So I'm just going to add a little bit more of the black uh, pepper. Okay, the eggs. So I'm going to place the whites here for the egg wash and the yolk in here. Let's say, let's do three eggs. So the whites here. Everybody shut their phones off. <laughs> Nobody pays attention here when I talk. Okay. And let's go with the three. Okay, so here we go. And now I need to mix it in. You know what? The best way is like this. Okay, see the potato mixture is ready. It holds together and that's exactly what you want. Okay, going to be washing my hands. I'll be right back to assemble the croquets. I'm going to add the two eggs here. So we have three yolks and two eggs. Let's get them all. the mozzarella ready so what you basically want you want little pieces like this okay they're I, I'm not really sure on the measurements but they're little pieces because they go right in the center of the um, croquet that's what I like I like when you eat the croquet that all the mozzarella comes oozing out okay so these are all the little logs I would say little logs all right so Let's get started. This is a great time that if you have any volunteers that are willing to eat them, to get them down, to get them here, I'll help you. So, Jessica, Hi. all right? So, because, you know, once you put your hands in the, in the egg wash and the flour, it gets all awful. So, I just want to show you how I get started. So, you take a piece, okay, let's say the size of a... Uh, I don't know what size is this like a uh, larger than a golf ball, but maybe definitely smaller than a baseball. So you make your round, okay? I need the camera maybe to come closer and look. Okay, so you make your round with your finger, your index finger. You make the indentation, and you place your piece of mozzarella inside, and then you kind of seal it. You don't want any of the mozzarella sticking on the outside, okay? So this is exactly what a croquet needs to look like. Now your next step will be the first one, and I find that this is an important step so they don't open, 
is to roll your croquet in flour. There you go. Okay? And then what I like to do, just on aluminum foil, on the counter, just place the first croquet in. Okay? So continue with your next, again, get your, your make a ball, that kind of squish it down, see, indent with your finger, next piece of mozzarella. You, like, I think I mentioned it before, ham goes really well, you could chop it up or you could roll it up by the, um, with the mozzarella and put it inside. We like them plain. Tradition is wonderful, but it's also what you grow up with, and the, it's all about the memories. This is the way I eat them when I go back to Italy in my area of uh, Vico Esquente by Sorrento, and this is the way we like them. Again, here's number two. So let's continue on. Let me show you one more. Okay, here's the bowl. Make it oblong, indent, put the piece of mozzarella in. You can make them larger, you can make them smaller. Sometimes when we have a dinner party, I like them to make them real tiny next to your meat uh, and salad. It makes a really nice uh, for me, uh, as a side dish, you have a little croquet on the side. They do that a lot in Italy for the weddings. Okay, here's your next one. Okay. Okay, we got 32 croquets done. Now the next step is I'm taking a cookie sheet. I'm going to add some of the breadcrumbs. Now this is a very, a uh, little bit difficult part. I just want to say also we used about 12 ounces of the mozzarella. I had a pound and I have about four ounces here left. So that's a good guideline for you uh, to know when you buy, when you prepare for this. Now I'm going to grab the first croquet I want to show you. Shake off the excess flour. This is a very important part because this is what seals everything. Okay, you see this? This is what you need to be doing. That gives it the shape and the smoothness and you make sure it's all sealed like that the cheese doesn't come out and you pass it to the third it. one. Now, if you got multiple people helping, it's the best thing because once you get your hands into the flour, everything becomes very sticky. So usually if you have a little bit of help, one person does the egg wash, one person does the egg, the breadcrumbs, it makes it easy. Again, okay. Now the breadcrumb, you want to press it on. Make sure you have both extremities of the croquet also with the breadcrumbs and like this. See that? Again, always maintain the shape so they're all very perfect. There you go. Here's your first one. Now, if you're making this uh, for a large gathering, making them the day before is ideal. They tend not to open when you leave them in the fridge uh, 24 hours. So what I do is uh, I take the tray, I just place it in the fridge, and the next day, right before you fry them, Add fresh breadcrumbs because the, fr the breadcrumbs on the outside, once they sit in the fridge, gets a little soggy. So for the extra crispiness, just add the extra uh, breadcrumbs right before frying and you're good to go. Uh, you could even make them a couple days in advance. They stay, um, they stay fine. But once you fry them, you want to eat them immediately. I mean, you could, if you make them in the morning, eat them in the afternoon or evening, that's good too. Maybe just uh, warm them up in a quick, in a hot oven just to get the cheese melted. And here it goes, okay? Okay, let's fry them. The oil is nice and hot. I'm using a vegetable oil. I think I mentioned it before. I am going to, what I like to do is just place them on my, on my uh, spoon and just drop them in the oil. So you're gently dropping them in. Don't overcrowd them. I'm putting three at a time because it needs to be a uh, hot oil. What happens if you put too many overcrowd them, the, the temperature drops and it doesn't create a nice crust. So that's it. I'm only putting three at a time and uh, let's let them fry. Okay, 
want to show you the color that they need to be when you take them out. How long does it take? I don't know, but I really go by the color. You see, take a look here. They look fantastic. There's a little issue going on. I keep frying. They keep disappearing. So guess what? I'm just going to put a cup on the plate and finish up this video, okay? See you at the table. Let's uh, taste one. Let's see. Let's open it up. I don't like to use dishes or fork. This, you know, the coca has got to be picked up. And let's open it up. Let's see. Look at the mozzarella. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, my God. La mozzarella che fila. Delicious. Oh, my God. I'm really going to burn myself, but that's okay. Oh. Deliziosi. You need to make this for your family. They're so uh, tasty and just freshly fried. Unbelievable. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Hit the like button. Uh, leave a comment. Make the recipes. These are recipes that my family loves. Uh, and I know you will too. Grazie mille. Arrivederci alla prossima. Ciao, ciao.